brightly shining. It is the light of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt it Amen. This morning we continue our sermon series, Miracle on Peachtree Street, and we continue to explore the different phases of what it takes to make a miracle. 
The first week, we talked about light. We need a light. And the second week, we talked about needing to be in place. And today, we're going to talk about what we do when it's time for the camera to turn on. Lights, places, camera, and you'll want to hear action tonight. So let us go to Luke, the first chapter, the Gospel of Luke, the first chapter, beginning in the 26th verse. You can follow along in your bulletin or in your electronic devices or in your Bibles. I am reading from the New Living Translation. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee. He sent Gabriel to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, But how can this happen? I am a virgin. The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say, that she was barren, but she conceived a son and is now in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. God, we've come here today expecting a word from you, not expecting a word from Jasmine, but expecting and anticipating the word from you, O oh God. So word of God, speak, pour down like rain. Open our eyes to see your majesty, to be still and know that you are in this place. Please let us stay and rest in your holiness. This is your servant's prayer in the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. So we've learned that light enables us to see what God is doing in us and around us and for us and with us. And we've also learned that it requires us to receive the miracles of God, requires us to get in our lane, to stand in our place, and to be ready to receive what God has already shown light on. And when we take pictures or make movies or shoot videos before we even start to move, most of the time we practice, we pose a little bit, we make sure the light is right, we make sure that we're in place. 
And if we are going to record, say, an introductory video to Atlanta First United Methodist Church, we have our script together, Stephen, and we've practiced and we've prepared. So when the camera starts rolling, oh, you don't hear me this morning. When the camera starts rolling, we already know what to do and what to expect. So here we are. Here we are in the fourth Sunday in Advent, the Sunday of peace, the Sunday that gets us so excited that the baby Jesus is about to be born again in Bethlehem that we can hardly stand it. Oh, wait, that's not what gets you excited. Oh, maybe it was the tree. Maybe it's the gifts that you hope are under the tree. Maybe it's the food that's going to be on the table at dinner time. <laughs> Maybe it's that you're going to get to see some people you haven't seen in a while. But I hope and pray that at some point the thing that gets you out of your seat, the thing that makes you full of joy, the thing that makes it so amazing that it's Christmas is that Jesus the Christ is born. Oh, you don't understand. See, people, Dr. Wynn, still think that Jesus is just something way over there that we talk about every now and then. People, see, people think that Jesus was born in Bethlehem a long time ago, and that doesn't really have anything to do with me because I'm struggling and I'm suffering, and life is not the way that I want it to be. You know, people have forgotten that Jesus is the best gift that we will ever receive because we've learned to rely on me, 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 and my bank account and what I want and what I can get from Amazon.com. Oh, you don't hear me this morning. But then we come to the Gospel of Luke. And the camera begins to fire up. The light comes on. People get in place. And we begin to hear the announcement that the greatest miracle that has ever happened is about to launch. The angel, the angel Gabriel. Did you know that in the Greek it's a play on word? It actually means the messenger of the miracle. <laughs> the messenger of the miracle shows up to a scandalous situation. See, we think we've gotten used to the story and we've watered it down. We've made it nice for prime time. But I'm here to tell you that this was a risky situation. This was a scandalous situation. People got mad. People started to lose their ever-loving minds because a virgin, an unmarried, an unlikely, <laughs> the angel showed up, called Mary by name. She wasn't expecting a miracle, Wayne. She was just minding her own business. She didn't even know about the miracle that already happened with her cousin Elizabeth. You know the one that they used to say. <laughs> they used to say was barren. The one that they used to talk about and the one whose husband laughed when they found out that Elizabeth was going to have a baby. Elizabeth, six months pregnant. Mary has no idea. There's no Snapchat. No Facebook, no Twitter, no carrier pigeons. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> the 
the angel shows up, tells this unlikely woman that she is favored. She's one of God's absolute favorites. And she is about to bear witness to the greatest miracle that has ever been. I can't even begin to imagine what it might have felt like to be Mary. The only phrase that I could come up with was a conundrum of emotion. Favored. Ooh, that's awesome. I'm favored by God? Wow. I know you're betrothed. That's a word that we don't really like because we have to sit in the reality that women were treated as property. That they were traded. That they were owned. They were told where to go, how to go, where to do it, how to do it. And their whole lives were arranged for them when they were little children. This is the scene we're rolling up on, friends. <laughs> she was betrothed. She was promised. There had already been a transaction that said that somewhere in the future she was going to belong to Joseph. But in the contract, there was a line that said she had to be unspoiled not defiled. She had to be a virgin. And then favored woman of God, bam, you're going to have a baby. Whole life destroyed. Every promise that she thought she might have broken what will people say what will they think what will they do will they stone me will they run me out of town what will happen to Joseph What will happen to my family? Will they be able to make a living? Will they be able to stay in this town? But I, I didn't do it. I, I, I didn't do anything, and yet the people are going to judge me. What are you talking about? You see, being a part of the family matters. Being a part of the family in good standing matters even more. You remember that we were promised the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, but Mary is not related to King David, the ultimate king that came before. But Joseph is. So how, messenger of miracle, how, how, how is this thing going to work? Scene change. Gabriel says, oh, you have never seen anything like this before. <laughs> he says, but don't be afraid because God has already got this worked out. Don't be afraid. Just stand back and wait and watch. Just stand back and expect the miracles of God to unfold before your very eyes. Do not be afraid. Just wait. For you, Mary... I know you're confused and disturbed. 
I know you are full of fear, but you have found favor with God and you will conceive and give birth to a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David and he shall reign. He shall reign over Israel forever and ever, and his kingdom shall never end. I don't know about you, but when people are going around blowing stuff up, <laughs> when cancer is so rampant that we begin to be so versed with cancer just like we know our names, when poverty is so clear to us that it doesn't even stop us in our tracks anymore. When children who are hungry come on TV screens or waltz right in front of us and we are not moved. When children cannot read. When we fuss and fight about whether or not we're going to educate the children or provide for the children. When all hell has broken loose, it's good news to me. I don't care where the miracle comes from, but if his kingdom shall reign forever, I'm all in for that. You don't have to understand what God is doing. Just expect it. You don't have to see what the rest of the story is. Just remember the promise. All of these he wills and he shalls and the Lord will, all of that is packed with promise to you. So grab your script. Get in place. The lights are on. The camera is on. Expect your miracle right here at 360 Peachtree Street. This is not the end of the story. Let's talk about it at 6 o'clock p.m. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Let every head be bowed. And now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless to the only wise God our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and evermore. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.